Hello, and welcome back to Chapter 6. Today we're going to look at Section 6.4, which deals with vectors and dot products. And this is going to be the first part of um, Section 6.4, as there will be a second part uh, tomorrow. 6.4 is all about dot products. Now, a dot product is actually a third vector operation. Um, if you recall back in Section 6.3, we looked at scalar multiplication and addition of vectors. So our vector operations of a dot product will produce a scalar. And remember, a scalar is going to produce a single number instead of another vector. And the definition of a dot product says, if vector u is equal to u1, u2, and vector v is equal to v1, v2, then their dot product, which is shown like this, and it kind of looks like a multiplication, but know that it actually means a dot product, is u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. And again, this will produce a single number or a scalar. And if you open your book to page 460, you'll see that you have five properties of dot products. One is vector u times vector v is, the, or I'm sorry, u dot v is the same thing as v or vector v dot vector u. If we take our zero vector and multiply it by, we'll say, vector v, this is still going to give us zero. Vector u dot with v plus w is going to be the same thing as vector u dot vector v plus vector u dot vector w, so it's kind of like you distributed. Then we also have, if we dot a vector itself, we're going to end up with the magnitude of that vector squared. And the last property says that if we have some constant c, which is a scalar, and we multiply that by u dot v, we're going to end up with that scalar of c times vector u dot v, and that's going to give us the same thing as vector u dot the scalar times vector v. And over the course of the next few examples, we're going to look at some, or we'll see how some of these properties work. So to begin with, for example one, we're going to find each dot product. And it says, uh, to start out with, that we have vector 3, 4, dot 2, negative 3. So to solve for this, we're going to take 3 times 2, and we're going to add it to 4 times a negative 3. Well, this is going to give us 6 minus 12, which gives us a negative 6. Part B, I'm going to take 2 times 1, and I'm going to add that to 2 times a negative 1, which is going to give me 2 minus 2, or 0. And um, part C, I have 0 times 3 plus 4 times a negative 2. So I end up with 0 minus 8, which is a negative 8. For example 2, it tells us that vector u is 3, 4, vector v is negative 2, 6, and vector w is 1, negative 1. For part a, we're going to find the dot product of u and v multiplied by vector w. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the dot product first. So when I do the dot product, I have u and v, which is 3, oops, 3 times a negative 2 plus 4 times 6, and then I'm going to uh, multiply that by vector 1, negative 1. 
So when I simplify this, 3 times a negative 2 is negative 6 plus 24. And again, that's being multiplied by 1, negative 1. So now if I simplify that, 6 plus a negative 24 is 18. And 18 times 1, negative 1. So you can either leave your answer like this, or you can actually go ahead and distribute. And that will give us 18 and a negative 18. So either one of these I would accept. Now part B says that we're going to dot U with 2W. And if you recall from your properties that we covered um, a couple slides ago, this is really the same thing as saying 2 times the quantity of U dot W. So I'm going to go ahead and do my dot product first and then multiply that answer by 2. So I really have 2 times the dot product of u and w, which is going to be 3 times 1 plus 4 times a negative 1. So this is going to give us 2 times 3 minus 4, which is 2 times a negative 1, which gives us a negative 2. And again, notice that when I do the dot product, the dot product is producing a scalar or a single number, just like it did here. And when I did the dot product up here, I got the 18, which is also a scalar. Example 3 tells us that the dot product of vector u with itself is 7. We want to know what is the magnitude of u. Well, back on your properties of dot products, you were told that if we took a vector and dot, oops, dotted it with itself, we end up with the magnitude of u squared, and we know that this is equal to 7. So if I know that the magnitude squared equals 7, if I want to find just the magnitude itself, in other words, I want to get the magnitude of u by itself, I'm going to square root both sides, and I see that the magnitude or my length is equal to the square root of 7. And the last uh, topic that we're going to look at today out of part 1 is um, the angle between two vectors. And it says that the angle between two non-zero vectors, which we're going to call theta, where theta is in between 0 and pi, is given by the cosine of u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So you can see kind of what we're looking at here. We have two vectors, u and v, that are um, held together essentially with an angle, theta. And what we're looking at is to find that angle between those two vectors, we are going to use this formula. Now, when you do this, your calculator does need to be set to degree mode. Okay, so um, when we find that, we're going to go, um, if we're given our two vectors, we're going to plug them into the formula. Then we're going to have to take the inverse cosine in order to find theta itself. And like I said, it has to be in degree mode. So our last example for today says that um, we want to find the angle between vector u and vector v, given what the two vectors are. So in this case, I know that the cosine of theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So cosine theta is equal to u dot v so I'm going to have, um, in my numerator, I'm going to have 3 times 1, or 3, plus 6 times 0, which is 0, divided by the magnitude of u. And the magnitude of u is going to be 3 squared, or the square root of 3 squared plus 0, which is going to be 3, times the square root of 1 squared plus 6 squared, or the square root of 
37. So when we simplify this, we end up with 3 divided by 3 square roots of 37. And if you take the inverse cosine of that, this tells us that theta is equal to 80.5 degrees. And this does include, um, or conclude, I guess, our part one of section 6.4. So I will see you guys tomorrow in class, and we will finish up 6.4 tomorrow night. Have a good day.